All right, guys, welcome again. For this chapter, we will start by writing a smart code. Let's write our code first, and then we will discuss about it. So as usual, we have our license type, and then we have our Pragma directive. Then we have initiated a contract, and then we are going to fill in contents of this contract. So the first thing I'll do is initiate a state variable, which will be an unsigned integer 256 type. We'll make it public so we can actually look at its state anytime, and we will give it a default value of 42. Then we are going to write a function that takes any value and doubles it. Just a function that doubles any value that is passed. All right, so let's just call it change something because it just changes something. And it takes an unsigned integer 256 type. And let's just call it input input and uh, let's just for now call it internal it's pure because it really doesn't take anything from the blockchain state and it doesn't change any state either it just doubles and returns and it will return another unsigned integer to 56 now let's write out the function which is call so it takes input and then doubles it it's two and then it just returns it turn input that's all it does awesome let's check that this works and we don't have any errors let's start by compiling compiled without any errors then let's deploy it awesome we have x okay so let's make it external go back compile it again deploy it again all right we have another uh, deployment here and x will be 42 and change something if we call it, it should return four Good. So it, it works. We don't need it to be uh, external anymore. We'll change it back to internal because we will call this function internally. And we will call this function from another function and we'll call it real test because that's the real test part of this function. And this function will call it externally. So we'll just make it external function. This is a view function. This will not change any state. It will we'll just be able to see this function. Actually, it doesn't really even need to be view. It just need to be called. Awesome. And this will call this function, which is an internal function. So we can actually call it. And we will call it by passing the parameters x. All right, so we can make it view actually. Awesome. So let's compile it and let's deploy it again. You will see the third instance of the deployment of this function, and we will see x is 42 because that's the default, and then we hit real test. If we hit real test, it should double it. It should take x in, double x. So x will be the input, it will be x equals x times two, so x should become 84, right? All right, and then if I hit x again, what do you think I should get? And I'll give you a few seconds to guess. Okay, all right. So let's see what we get. Oh, we get 42. We know that this change something function works. We have made this function external and called it and it doubled whatever we passed in. But in this case, it really did not double X. Hmm. There's something going on here. Let's make some changes to this contract and let's talk about it after I have made some changes and I'll discuss it further. The first things first, I want to change this variable to array. So this will no longer be an um, unsigned integer. This will actually be an array of unsigned integer so let's just call it integer we'll still call it public so we can keep an eye on its state and then we will just five six and that's that the next change we will make is in this change something function it will no longer take an unsigned integer 256 it will take a array and because if it, it's an array we have to either call it storage or memory in this case we'll just call it storage it's still call the parameter underscore input that's fine and it will also return array and we have to use a keyword memory here this uh, input equals input times two doesn't make any sense so let's change something has to make some change so we'll just change the first index of the array and we would make it 42 because that's definitely the answer to everything and then this is an internal function it has to be called from within the contract and we can call this from the real test which was already there external view Sure, we don't really need the view. So now let's try to compile this and see if we get any errors. Uh, pure, don't really need pure to internal. Okay, let's compile this. Awesome, we compiled this without any errors. Now let's try to deploy this. 
we can delete other deployments and deploy this. Okay, so when we deploy this, we get this X, which is a public variable. So it made a getter function for this for us to use. So we can just check X zero should be one, X uh, three should be four, that checks out and x5 should be 6. Okay, so that is working. Now if we hit run test, it will call change something to pass in this x, which is the state variable, and inside this change something function, the first parameter should get changed to 42. Let's see if that holds up. Well, before we do that, let's check the first parameter. Still one. We run the run real test. We see the transaction go through. And then when I hit this, I get 42. Huh. So this actually did change. Unlike the last example where it did not change the state variable. Okay. All right. So what's going on here? At you know, some point it's changing. At some point it's not changing. Clearly the unsigned integer state variable and the array state variable are behaving differently. And then there is this internal, external storage and memory keywords. There is clearly a lot we don't understand here. All right, so I copied and pasted the very first example I showed where we tried to change the state variable. We tried to double it, but it did not work. So let's go over this in details and see what it actually did, why it did not double, and try and understand this. Because this is the simplest step to understanding the overall picture. And we can just clear the deployed functions and let's talk about it. All right, so we have the state variable, which is of the type unsigned integer 256. In Solidity, the primitive types of data, such as unsigned integer and Boolean, are passed by value. What does pass by value mean? So let's write it down. These things are passed by value. What does it actually mean? What it means is whenever we pass this value to a function like here, passing unsigned integer to function over here, when it gets to here, because that's the function call, it passes by value. And what that means, it's they're always copied. They don't really pass the original copy in the memory. They, they copy this entirely, they clone it, and then they pass the clone. So over here, x is cloned into input variable and b variable, and that gets passed. So whenever we call this for the state variable, it got cloned. And now we have two variables. One is X and one is underscore INP. And then the underscore INP variable gets doubled. That one now becomes 84. However, this X does not change. That's why whenever we called X, it did not change. It still showed 42. Even though we know for a fact that this change something function works, cool. All right, so that kind of explains why unsigned integer x did not double. So let's look at the second example that I showed where we actually passed in array in the function and the function actually changed the state variable x. Okay, so this is different, definitely. So what's going on here? Why did this change when the other did not? The answer is passed by reference. That is the short answer. In the case of arrays, the value is passed by reference. So when we pass this value x in this function, there is a pointer that gets passed to this function and that points to this original value x. So this value underscore x and x is actually pointing to the same value. This is just a pointer. So when we change underscore x, we are actually changing x. This is not the case of value type where the data itself got copied. And this kind of variables, which is an array, we call it a reference type because it's passed by reference. Okay, so now we know that we have two kinds of variables in Solidity. One is a value type, which is passed by value. The values are always copied when they are called by a function. And then we have this reference type, which are passed by reference, and they're not copied when they're called by a function. Instead, a pointer gets passed on to that function. So if you go to the docs, you can actually see it. So we have types, you have a value type, and you have reference type. And you will see the reference types are arrays, structs, and all that. And value type is all the primitive types like booleans, integers, addresses, and enums, and 
all that. So that explains value type versus reference types. But now what are this storage? What is this memory? And why did we have to do internal and so forth? That might take a little bit of explanation. And it took me a while to wrap my head around it. And hopefully I can pass on the information and save you some trouble. This is important to understand to be a good developer in Solidity.